Hello, welcome, and good afternoon. I hope you are getting me clearly. And thank you very much for the that uh, amazing introduction. And I would like to thank everyone who's watching in weekend about this session and joining with Google Developer community. So I'm almost happy to have you in my session. And so let's talk about web stories. I'm too excited. So what is web stories? Okay, wait. I'm going to slide, do this slide transition. This works. Okay. So who am I? As I was introduced already, so this stuff you already know. So I am Gokira Ambassador and I'm doing my own startup. And I love JavaScript and Dart and Flutter, also into web technologies, and I am from Sri Lanka. And it's a kind of a morning to us. And good afternoon for you. So you can follow me in Twitter with I'm Chatu. And that's all about me. So let's move to the topic. So today we are going to talk about uh, the first thing we will be talking is on what are web stories. And next thing will be, um, let's see. So, what are the benefits of using web stories? So we are going to discuss a lot on this part. And after that, so we're going to talk about who uses web stories currently, what are the current users and how they actually they are doing it and what are the uh, good stories uh, of using web stories. And let's talk about a little bit about how to create web stories. Uh, your own web stories. And I'm also going to touch about misconceptions you made and the community might have on web stories. And I'm also going to talk about tips when you're creating your own web stories. And this is going to be the kind of a very long part of my session. So this is the agenda for today on my session. So this is a little bit of a sneak peek of what are the web stories. Kind of bad animations, not animation, I mean the quality of the video, uh, GIF, but I think you got the point. So these are really good web stories, but my quality is really bad when presenting it. So sorry about that. Okay, so this is a good quality one for web stories. You can see. So, what is actually web stories? It's actually popular story format for the web. So you already know that if stories, the stories come came from Snapchat to Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter and LinkedIn. So everyone has stories. So sorry, actually got my microphone. Is it okay now? Cool. And I'm really sorry for the technical disruption. Seems my microphone had issues, so I had to switch to another one. Hope you are clear, uh, clear. hearing me clear. Clear, yeah. Cool. 
So it's actually for the, let's get back to the topic. So I've talked about web stories. So web stories actually the popular story format in the web. So it's actually started with, I think, Snapchat, then moved to Instagram and Facebook and reached Twitter and also <laughs> reached LinkedIn. So now stories are everywhere. There's memes, but next for the stories. So yeah, this is the next. Uh, so web stories. So world got the web got the web stories. And talking about web stories. So different when it comes to the social media stories and uh, web stories is actually, they are, can be evergreen. Evergreen means this, they are not going to expire. It will be stays forever. So you can actually decide when it is going to expire or you can keep it as long as you want. And you can have live content like uh, a cricket match or football match or soccer match or whatever the favorite sport match that you like have lives and also like live events. You can have a web stories for events and talking about the real uh, real time content and this is because it's going to be live now and this is how the content is going on or you can actually give a kind of a breaking news. And yeah, talking about web, web stories, I heard that there was an uh, earthquake in near Philippines Paluan or some area. So I'm actually hope that everybody is uh, is actually uh, without any harm. And I my praise on there. And next thing, the web stories belong, belongs to you, not the social media platform or any place. It actually belongs to you. You can host in your domain, you can host in your web drives or you can host it in some uh, providers also, there are platforms for web stories and it belongs to you and you can customize and you can choose what you're going to show. And actually web stories are really web pages under the hood. So it's a typical HTML pages with AMP tags. So AMP is actually for accelerated mobile pages it was been there for a long time and it was uh, evolving. And this is a kind of a next development for the app having the story format. So stories, actually the web pages, you need to actually have uh, this in your mind because I'm going to repeat it a few times. So what are the benefits of using web stories? Before going to web, uh, talk about benefits, I'm going to show you some web stories that I like. And I hope since my resources also using high in this device, I like to close this after you sh uh, showing it. So it's going to be kind of okay. So this is from Lonely Planet. So this is about the five destinations to see wildlife with your kids. Okay. So you can see this this part is called the publisher logo and you have the title and this page we call it as a cover page for your story so this is how you navigate it's normally like this is how we saw in and we can see it in a desktop but in a mobile you can you, you will see the typical uh, story format so this is for the desktop view so you, you can just pass it to the next and you can actually share the links. So you can see this is a complete story and with less text, not like typical blog post or not like a video, but it's interactive. You can see there's animations or you can see this, this is a kind of a video. So this is title, this one, and there's another video. So you can see this is kind of a very interactive and you have your own way of customizing these things and you, you know how to present it. So this is, you can see that even the images get animations and videos again. So this is how it's going on. And you can see there are many stories piled up in the below view, that means this is this has whole five destination details, not like a teaser 
I will give you one or clickbait like I will give you one and you need to click uh, uh, for the, my link to see all things. So I'm going to talk about that also. So there, there shouldn't be any uh, what called clickbaits. It's going to be ruin, ruin your uh, user experience. So this is uh, from Wise Magazine. This is about Japanese curry. So I can actually play it. Uh, as you see, I can pause it. I can play it. Or you can define it you need to be auto-played. Or you can actually skip it or likewise. So that's why this is different compared to YouTube video. So you can actually stop it where you want and you can skip some parts. So this is actually for the recipes. You, you can see actually it's going to move it to next step. You can pause it. So this is a complete small clips of video rather than a full fledged YouTube video. So let's move to the next one. So this is one of my favorites. So this is actually a landscape mode story. So most of this, uh, some of the visual editors doesn't support it yet. But when it comes to developers in the underlying, the AMP story has the landscape mode. So you can see this is I'm currently paused, but video is actually looping in. You can, you can see that you can actually enable the audio. You can disable the audio. So it's up to you to uh, define this, but it's up to user to uh, consume it. So you say if it doesn't like audio, you can they can shut it off. I'm going to talk about how we can uh, make it the user experience better with videos also in future slides. So this is a complete landscape mode. So it's completely with videos and still images. So this is for an input magazine for the automotive. And you can see this highlighting the things. So you can see this not like a blog post. It's about highlights and small stories and animations again. So yeah, so I can uh, bore you up to with many, many stories. So I'm going to give you a few stuff again. So this is actually from an independent content creator rather than uh, uh, big brands that I'm talking about, Forbes, Ronnie Planet. So this is from independent uh, content creator. It's about the, the recipes. So this is kind of interactive and it's very uh, easy way and kind of very interesting for the user to see rather than watching a complete YouTube video how to uh, cook or how to make these calories or anything. So yeah, it's back only, I think, yeah, it's cool. This something it is, I like this, so yeah, it's cool. <laughs> and uh, moving on to another, and then this is going to be last story that I'm going to showcase. So bear with me. So this is about seven must see horror movies streaming on Amazon Prime. So so this is going to be the introduction, and this is starting from the movies. So you can see that this has many, many story slides moving on, and you can see there's the swipe up. So you can link, have links to swipe up, and you can make user go to a uh, link that from the here. If you, uh, if you talk about this link up features, and we call it page att attachments, or you can put real links in the content also. So this is kind of different compared to like Instagram stories or Facebook stories where you cannot uh, share the links. When it comes to Instagram, you need to have 10,000 followers or you need to have a verified best to have a swipe up feature to have page attachments and links to other products. So in here, you can actually, web stories is yours, belongs to you. You can actually have your own links. And as I said, it is under, under who this is HTML. This is web pages. In the web, you need to have links. That's how the web works. So yeah, so it's going to be the last one. I'm going to close it and moving back to the benefits. So we actually talked about what are web stories. We have seen what are web stories. And let's talk about what, in, what are the benefits using them. So, so you can actually. As I showed, you can view by page and page. It's up to you to define, uh, decide the, the user to decide which page he can skip, 
or which page he's going to see. We cannot define that one, but we can create the content. And user can move forward and backward. So if, if it is a thing going very fast, like you have auto, uh, OK, sorry. This time, I actually lost my internet connection. So I actually moved to mobile hotspot. I hope I am getting loud and clear again. Yeah, so we can. So this, you know, we have kind of a very ISP bad issue these days due to the pandemic. Everybody's having the internet uh, classes and online studies in there. So we have kind of internet down times. So sorry about that. So back to topic. So. We talked about web stories and we saw what our web stories are. And we we actually talking about the benefits of the stories. So as I said, that you can skip and you can move forward backwards and moving forward on the slides. So the next thing will be the links and quizzes. So this is a kind of a new feature that introduced recently for the web stories. So you can have links and the quizzes. Link was there and the quizzes was the new part. So you can have quizzes polls like uh, they are in the instagram you have binary polls and you can have uh, quizzes so it's kind of very interactive and then recent announcement also i think in end of 2000 2020 or maybe one, they introduced the google discover so this is a place where they actually feature web stories so even the indie developers and the famous brand like Forbes and yeah, all of these are going to be in Discover tab. And currently it's actually uh, released in India and US and a few other countries, but not completely global, uh, globally released. So it is going to be in mobile search uh, application as mobile website of the Google. When you go there, you will see a Discover tab in the bottom navigation. You can select it and you will get a kind of a uh, personalized story collection of the sliders, you can actually go like Facebook story browsing. And as I said, can have links, page adjustments, swipe up. And the cool part is support monetization. You can have story ads and you can earn from the store. So web story is not a typical, uh, I will going to start uh, talk about that in a bit uh, so i'm going to give you an idea that you can use uh, google adsense it's currently supported and a few other ad networks also on the way of uh, jumping into the, the wagon of web stories so you can actually monetize them and you can actually ap apart from this advertisement you can actually have in if you are influencer and if you're kind of a web stories getting very good uh, audience you can have brand deals or applicate links to the products, like if you are doing game, uh, gaming stories or anything, something related to gaming, you can have uh, applicate links to the stores where you get kind of a commission, or you can have brand deals, like from if you are doing uh, stories about cooking or fashions, you can get brand deals. So these are kind of a way of monetization and earning from your stories. 
Web stories are the content, same content. So who use web stories? It's currently using BBC, Washington Post, Forbes, and many of these uh, brands actually using them. And also there are many indie developers, many content creators who actually into web stories. Moving forward. So how to create web stories? Yes, the question after these all things that, that I said. So the first way is actually using no code tools. There are drag and drop uh, visual editors and with a uh, large number of template libraries. You can use uh, makestories.io uh, or newsroom.ai, or there's a plugin for web, uh, WordPress. The one in the picture actually is actually web stories for the WordPress. So the wide range of website powered by WordPress in the internet currently. I think it's about closer to 40% 40, uh, 40 of sites or so, yeah, 35 or something. It was higher before, but large chunk of web is powered by WordPress. So there's a, a WordPress plugin from Google itself. You can actually install it and you can have the web, web stories in your blog or your e-commerce site. And for the developers, you have a story component. You can create your own stories. You can have the quizzes, you can have the animations, and it's going to be kind of a, mm, it depends on you. If you're a designer, it's totally comfortable, and you can use the CMS CSS, and you can create stories. Okay, cool, let's move forward. So now you how do you create the web stories? So there are some misconceptions when it comes to web stories. People say different things on the different things. I'm going to actually make you straight on these things. What I'll do. So web stories are teasers to main content. So this is a kind of very misconception. You create a content, like you create a blog post or you create a web uh, YouTube video, and you think web story is going to be the teaser for this main content. Nope. Web stories, it's own way of telling the story. And you, you tell your story if you think YouTube or you, you have a whole blog for it. But web stories, another way of telling the story. It's not a teaser. It's not like a clickbait that you put it into the internet and you pick it. And in the swipe up uh, page, you said to learn more, click here. So no, it's not like that. People, people love to see in the story way of doing things. That's how the UX works. You can have links, but be careful because people like to go with the flow, you know, tapping. It's kind of because it's a human nature to listen to stories. So they are actually fascinated with the stories. So web stories are actually kind of a very interactive way of telling a story rather than a complete blog post reading from top to bottom or a lengthy video consume more of the data. So web stories are kind of a sweet spot that you can give the stories in a very uh, chunks and have a very small video clip to explain it. And yeah, the story should tell the whole story. So it's not going to be like I'm going to showcase about seven movies, uh, seven best movies, and I'm going in the story. I'm going to talk about the seventh one, sixth one, and fifth one, and we're going to put another uh, story page saying that for to see more, click here. No, <laughs> that's not a good deal. Experience. So it need to be complete story. It's need to have a start and it has some kind of a way of climbing and it has a climax and it has to have an end. So don't make uh, stories in the, stop the stories in the middle and push the, uh, your viewers to another thing. That's not a good experience. And web story is not a like billboard ad. So I'm going to put a poster in there. So I have a new post. Click here, like some of the Instagram, that new post. You put a story that's saying new post. That's it. Click a link. No, web story is not like a billboard that. So be careful when you're using like that. And some say that you cannot have links. Like Instagram, you cannot put the links and not going to work. No, web stories can have links. But be careful, don't put a lot of links. Keep the links in the best places where users like to leave. 
otherwise you will store your story will have people leaving in the middle not reaching the end of the story make sure that you using it wisely and some say that web stories are not interactive it was in the beginning some might say it is still interactive because it's a story format now you can have polls and you can have quizzes so it's more interactive now and yeah there's a misconception that you cannot uh, monetize that there's no point of having stories with the whole link uh, whole story because you cannot earn uh, money out of it or earn anything out of it no that's not true so you can actually have monetize and you can earn something out of your story it's like a typical web content so if you are a content creator the same way you actually earning from things so this is a kind of a new way of earning things new stream of earning things and only visual tools can create web stories that's also a misconception so you can have your own if design things there's a complete support for developers uh, even uh, google itself actually helped uh, many of these creators who created the visual stories telling tools so the people who are actually behind the uh, newsroom ai and uh, make stories they got actually highlighted from uh, google web, St uh, web stories channel and given them very uh, kind of a boost from the people to use it so google helps if you actually created your own uh, visual to tool for the web stories also as a developer you can actually create it and make it kind of a monetizing and get the people uh, using it to create web stories yeah so talking about interactive this is the kind of the polls currently have so you can have binary fall this style for more casual and you can have the emojis to select with the dark theme you can see and you can have a poll with light theme and quiz it's going to be like that and yeah quizzes are there also there are many of the visual storytelling tools currently supported them and there's guide on amp stories in the amp.dev to how to create your own uh, poll or quiz starting from the binary polls and yeah this is going to be the tips part yeah i reach about i think 30 minutes now i'm not sure let's see so this is going to be the biggest part of the session so let's move on so starting from the content how to create web story content how to find it so the first tip is going to be can be evergreen content so it can be the already existing blog post that you have in website which is given very good feedbacks you can actually uh, get the good content currently you have and make it into the web story and lifestyle recipes sports travel guides really works well it's currently proven especially i love the recipe stories because i can stop it in the middle and i can do the thing and again start from there rather than youtube video this i need to completely load and pause 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 in the story is like a small chunks 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 you can actually stop in a uh, story and do your work and get the next story uh, moving forward and do that things and going like so it's kind of a very interactive and even for the travel guides it's very interactive okay the script the story before you're creating it so get a document and start writing it like you brainstorming for your youtube content or you brainstorming for the blog content or same like i'm doing this presentation i have script i started from the brainstorming to the uh, topics first and then i started to fill in the content in between what i'm going to be putting in slides so same way goes for the story make sure what how many pages you're going for it and what are the pages going to convey the users So this is not typical social media stories. Make sure that you are not going to post that. This is the th thing that I'm go going to eat today. Like you posting uh, 
your social media because in social media it's going to disappear with uh, 72 hours or 24 hours but most of the time you create web stories for to be the evergreen or keep forever so and use uh, people from web stories not like social media your friends or somebody like that but this is web, web so it's going to be consumed by anybody in the world so make sure that it is kind of a valuable or people would like to read that story and if you're going to have a text content keep it less than 300 characters for my side it's better to keep less than 200 or 250 uh, because you know people are very reluctant to read very lengthy text that's why people sometimes keep long blog post and long facebook post or also sometimes i am going to skip that one and make sure text is readable i'm going to talk about typography in a little bit of time so make sure your text is readable no small fonts to make you a big content city so you get a very lengthy paragraph and you when you put in the story you cannot see it so you're going to uh, make it very small font to uh, have this space for that lengthy content but don't do that because people are not going to uh, read that even in small fonts so make sure that it's going to be valuable for this uh, person and make sure that you know your point of view are you going to read it and make it is very relevant when you come to this uh, when you pick in the uh, posters and cover picture uh, for the story make sure it is relevant and it is it's have a kind of eye-catching poster and a cover so people like when you uh, see it in web results or when you see it in uh, carousel or when you see it in google discover the first one will be showing is the poster so when you see the poster make sure that people will like to click it to see your story because it's going to be multiple stories and you you should have you want to pick from the users so make sure that it's very relevant and because don't force something very eye-catching but not relevant to the content to, it's like a clickbait people are not going to come again so typography i'm not a kind of a typography expert but from my experience i will try to because typography is very uh, old it has very lengthy history with uh, people learning new things so it cannot be discussed in this few minutes so i'm going to give you a few tips don't use too many fonts like you're having uh, poppins and you're using open sans and many fonts styles at the same time don't do this maximum would be like two to three two will be kind of sweet spot and don't use too many colors for the text keep it up to two or three no three is not good two is fine better to have one and don't use too many text animations so it's going to be boring and if you have a kind of animation that your text is going to be popped after 12 seconds do the animation so people are not going to wait till it's going to be complete to read it so don't have too many text animations few animation is totally fine but don't put very lengthy to everything to go to be kind of animated don't, don't do that and don't use too many font variations variations come to like font sizes font face changes like bold to italic so it's all the variations so don't change uh, too many fam family don't have very mix of italics bold and everything is with all the its variations different font sizes so keep it very minimal and when it comes to images so you have images you need to have it's very like like as you can see the stories actually have the images small videos rather than the complete texty things so when it comes to images use high quality images don't kind of have a very pixelated images so i'm going to talk about next thing is going to be contradicting this one you might find but it need to be high quality but also okay i'm going to talk about that in a little bit so this is make sure your subject in the image stays in the middle because uh, there are various font screen sizes you have to remember there's very lengthy font sizes foldable phones tablets ipad iphones so uh, there might be 
crop factors when it comes to these stories. When you put the image to the story, it will be fit into your screen. So there will be some crops. So make sure there is a the subject in the middle. So even there has many uh, croppings, you still have the subject in the middle. So set the all the text and title for the search engine optimization and also for the accessibility. So people with the screen readers, when they read, uh, use it for the stories, they will get actually benefit out of it rather than telling uh, image underscore one, zero one JPG. So make sure that have a good older text and it will be beneficial for your uh, search and demonstration, which I will be talking in a uh, few weeks of time. And optimize the images. Even though I stalled you to use high quality images, optimize the image. So if you have very uh, landscape photo that is going to be put as a portrait, still the whole image will be loaded. So crop it as the portrait and use that way. And also optimize the image. What is the optimization part? So I think I'm going to talk about a little bit on that one before they're going to the uh, uh, videos. So why I say optimize images? When it comes to social media apps like Facebook or Instagram, when you upload very high quality image as the story, they do actually optimize because it, will, it is up, uh, uploaded to their servers and they will do the optimization. They will reduce the image, the size of the image, so and they crop it and for everything will be done by them. But as I said, web stories belongs to you. So it is your responsibility to optimize the images. Most of the these tools actually, like visual editing tools, are uh, currently uh, helping you on this part. But if you're doing kind of a WordPress or the web stories for the WordPress, it's currently not yet uh, supported to the optimization in when you upload it. But they have that one in the roadmap. Until that, you can actually use other tools to do this for you. So the best size for the image is actually uh, 1080 for the width and uh, one, uh, 1920 for the height. So it's like the full HD in the portrait mode. So crop it into that part. And uh, also when it comes to GIFT, GIF is actually very old format of storing uh, images. So rather than using a GIF, get it, use the video instead. So yeah, I, I might sound very, uh, what are you saying? But uh, the best part is the video can be optimized and so fast rather than a GIF. So use video instead of a GIF. And when it comes to photos, like your photos from the cam uh, cameras and all stuff, use JPG or WebP. There are tools to make it a WebP. WebP is currently supported by the, all the newest browsers in the mobile and the web also. So WebP or JPG is recommended, but all browsers doesn't support WebP. So for a safe, safe bet, you can use JPEG. And for the Im other images, use PNG or WebP. PNG is for the other things. If you already want transparency, the alpha channel is in the PNG, the JPGs cannot be transparent. And there's a new format coming called AVIF. If, uh, this format is currently supported for newest mobile phones and browsers, but doesn't support the older. So don't go for it yet. You might will be able to use it in the future. And there are some sites called uh, like Squash.app. You can actually use it for to optimize the image. You can actually reduce the sizes. There are plenty of other tools also you can use, even the Photoshop and all the typical web development tools have it. So next, moving next, I'm going to talk about videos, how to work on your videos for the web stories. So maximum length for the video is 50 second, 15 seconds, but it's still very lengthy. Talk, try to keep it like 10 seconds. Or something because people won't look very lengthy videos in the stories. And next thing, crop it vertically. Uh, even though it is very lengthy video uh, of the landscape mode, it's going to fit into the mobile phone, but it will hide the two parts of the video and only middle part will be uh, rendered to the uh, visible, visible part. 
of the story, but still you load all of the video. So use kind of a tool like AVD Max, AVD Max. It's an open source, very old tool, but still works and cross-platform using with Mac, Linux, and Windows. So it's uh, you can get, uh, get it free, or you can use the Adobe Suite to do the optimization, do the cropping, and uh, for the vertical, and also crop it for the relevant part of the video rather than having uh, starting parts or before the uh, what we what we call it trimming. Yeah, do the trimming. And use a 264 codec and use MPEG container, MPEG for it, MP4 with a 264 codec. Because uh, these uh, two formats actually support every phone browser and uh, the web browsers. So this is kind of a universal format for now. So you take uh, 264 codec and limit to 724 resolution. Uh, I know that. Most of the phones record up to 4K, so but uh, your readers uh, should load it, even from the countries like uh, ours, still have the internet issues and uh, the bandwidth issues. So better to limit it to 720p resolution, it look good. And two to five MB is ideal, four, three to four is my recommendation. And AVD Max support, Max support it actually. So you can actually very really compress your videos into one to two MB or so, but you will lose quality. Sweetport is about 20% compression. It will be like, uh, go like uh, two to three MBs from there. So make sure that you have small videos. And use title attributes for SEO. So when you post a video in a story, even for the accessibility and search engines, doesn't know what is contained. So use title for that one. And if don't put text in the videos, like into the burn into videos that you put the text into the video, don't use it. If you want to put the text, just put it on top of the video of the story. So it will be beneficial for the search engine optimization and for the accessibility. And also you can actually have the captions. You can generate the captions and subtitles for the video. There's a format called VPP. It's an open source format, and there are open source tools to create a timestamp plus the text. And you can put it into the web stories so people can have seen. Because some of the people like me, even uh, most of the time, uh, listen to the uh, see the stories without audio. So I keep the mute turn on all the time. So we actually benefit from the captions and the text in the top of the video. And discoverability, you can see, this is the Google Discover before the points. So you can see that people can go like social media posts that from publisher to publisher. This is Sri Lanka in Lonely Planet, just missed it. Yeah, so yeah, they have it. And yeah, and I love the Philippines also, this is a very nice environment and all the waterfalls and Palawan, I love it. So discoverability. So where can your stories get discovered? So you can put your stories into Google Discover, but make sure you, you have all the search engine optimization up front that you have set it. So, uh, it like kind of a, a way of uh, putting everything. I'm going to talk about more on the story because I have a separate slide to it. So currently Google publish uh, web stories experience playbook. So this is kind of a good uh, way to start things. So in the next part on the discoverability, you can create your own story player widget using AM tags and put it into your page your website already. So you can actually have a kind of a carousel of your stories where you can click it and open the web stories and move forward with the uh, list of stories. So this is kind of a way of uh, giving a light to your stories that you created. And uh, there are plugins for it, and even there's a WordPress theme called Astra already support. Out of the box, you can have that uh, same kind of feeling with Instagram and uh, Facebook where you have all the rounded story listing. 
uh, in the website also you can have a kind of a slider also and there are uh, already tools like a join uh, from, uh, there's a tool called join it is also highlighted in google uh, stories so they actually support uh, a embeddable html code where yeah, you can put it and your all stories will be uh, sli uh, displayed in the website even word in wordpress you can actually embed your story into your uh, post or page and you can uh, make sure that you have links from your website to the story and links from uh, outwards to the store uh, website too because when it comes to search search and inbox they are following the links so if you have the story linked into the website and about is followed to that one and let's go ahead so web is actually full of links so uh, that's how the bots works so make sure you have links to the story and the other way around and yeah story in a story so you can share the story in social media so you create the web story and you can actually share it in social media also. So that's a new way of getting the people uh, traffic to your web story. So moving on. And now Google uh, show the web stories in the Google image searches, also in Google search. I'm going to show you a sample in the Google images. So this is Google image uh, result. And you can see in your, I think it's in your left side. Yeah, left side. Left side, you can see there's a two stories called Discover European Hidden Villages, Discover European Hidden Villages. So you can see a special mark on each image, like a typical story mark, we call it a story mark. So in this result, if you click it, it's going to be open a story. So that's how we actually uh do the thing so seems i'm behind the time so let's see i'm going to go really fast for the co part uh, so co so this is kind of uh things that i already said so links your stories from your website and at this story to your site map this is how the google uh, scroller will come to your website also so you can add your stories to a site map. If you're using WordPress, uh, the stories for WordPress is already doing it. Uh, so apart from that, if you're, you are using it, you can create a site map with your stories and you can uh, publish it to your web, store, uh, web master panel in the search console, Google search console. Uh, so the next part is, there's some uh, meta data guidelines for the stories. So, like uh, I will go to explain a little bit of it. You need to have publisher, publisher logo, portrait, port, uh, poster, title is required. If you are not providing this metadata, you don't get any chance to uh, feature this one in Google Discover. So make sure you have these four things filled out. And when it comes to animations, uh, you cannot put animation to the publisher logo. Publisher logo, should carry your branding but doesn't include any animations it shouldn't include any animation so gif are not permitted and keep the publisher name under 20 characters this is not a mandatory but when it comes to google discover it's going to be truncated if, if it is lengthier than 20 characters so make sure you keep it under 20 characters and when it comes to title keep it under 70 characters otherwise it's going to be truncated with triple dots so yeah and publisher uh, image need to be a raster image as i said it cannot have animations so it should be jpeg or png and when it comes to poster and cover page is two different things you need to i didn't uh, uh, get to into mind that one because poster is when who actually when it comes to the discover and all these uh, pages will be showing it so it's like a poster and not the uh, cover. Cover is the one of the first of your story. So don't burn title to the post image. Don't put the title in the image itself because its uh, title will be put from the title metadata in top of the image. So if you have the uh, title 
on on the image burn itself it's going to be duplicated and uh, people will be won't be able to read it and for the most uh, uh, do the links share the story in the social media okay the last part i'm going to talk about is testing so you can append uh, development equal one to this uh, currently have a story you can I'm, I'm going to have that story okay and append develop one. this is actually an amp feature every amp feature does this one that support the development slash equal one so seems lonely platter has actually blocked it so sorry i will show it you can actually try it in other one since i'm out of time I'm, i i might have much time to do it so you can use google web stories test tool to test uh stories actually have all the metadata required and is valid amp uh, html so you can use this link to go to there and optionally you can test for rich result uh, test tools also so it will be uh, showing you all the rich results uh, like recipes so you can actually set up it as an open graph tools and a schema.org tags uh, to make it more rich results and yeah the finally for the resources you can go to stories.google domain and they will have the, the blog post and the guides what are the visual tools uh, supported uh, no code tools and uh, new features coming up and for the developers go to amp.dev you can have your own tools and you can create your own stories and finally there's google web creators youtube channel and instagram and twitter you can actually follow them and they are they are creating a real uh, real good content they have a story book called a playlist called storybook uh where we actually talk about the stories and i think summary yeah so what are we talked about today so we actually talked about what are web stories and we have a kind of a demo on it and we also talk about benefits of using uh, web stories and who use web stories and how to create web stories and we also talked about uh, misconceptions people have about stories and okay i went too fast and tips on web stories finally and that's all folks and thank you very much again the uh, google development team and for inviting me to have a uh, talking here and hope i'm not uh, too late for the q and yeah, you have about four minutes for q and a about web stories so for now we will be having our live question and answers so let's start so uh, for our first question how to make an engaging stories story in web stories yeah it's a really good uh, question to start with and i'd love to answer it so when it comes to web story uh, to make it very engaging you should actually have a good story build up from start to end so you have a good cover image and you have a good cover topic that will attract the people into web story first then you need to have kind of a chunks of your stories into the pages so make sure that uh, you will get the attention first have a good cover image and a poster first and create a relevant title and then keep your story building up having having a small of videos will be kind of really beneficial and have kind of a uh, few animations not too many animations 
and that will make your story engaging. All right. Um, thank you so much, Boxer. So for our next question, for our next question is, what are the limits on the design when creating web stories? Yeah, so when it comes to the uh, development side, uh, since you're using AMP, there are kind of limitations of the J custom JavaScripts that you can use. When it comes to visual tools, they have their own limitations. Uh, like uh, when it comes to visual story uh, tool, they have a kind of a limitation where you cannot uh, put videos into the cover image. So it's, it's kind of a uh, dif uh, kind of a different for the tools, but basically uh, it's like a typical uh, story format. So you can actually have animations and uh, based on the uh, tools that you have, like WordPress uh, plugin, it has kind of a way of having the shapes. So when it comes to the limits, there are only few shapes. And when it comes to the WordPress plugin again, they have kind of a set of uh, predefined templates, but you cannot have your own templates yet. It's in the uh, roadmap. So uh, there are very uh, pretty much many tools available now. I suggest you to st uh, start with uh, every tool and uh, choose that one is actually really good for your use case. All right. So, um, so that's for our question. For next, for our next question is, how does web stories affect search engine optimization? Yeah. So as I said in first part, web story are typical web pages under the hood. So it's uh, same like the search engine optimization. And when it comes to the, uh, as Google explained, Google team explained it, uh, if you have a whole blog post and if you're not going to duplicate all blog posts as your uh, story, if you're going to kind of a uh, little towns of that one, it's not going to be heard for do, uh, search engine optimization uh, telling it's the duplicate content. So they said clearly that you can use it you can use your blog post and you can make the web story for that blog post that not going to harm you as a second optimization rather than it's going to be beneficial because it's going to also indexed. So since web story is also web pages, it's going to be indexed and it also going to be uh, highlighted in uh, Discover and it can be highlighted in Google images search also. So it's kind of a new way of getting more traffic to the uh, same content. All right, it can be highlighted and acknowledged in Google Images. All right, so for our next question is, do front-end frameworks support web stories like Angular or Vue.js by embed, embed it within the code, or is it something that gets uploaded similar to a social media post? Yeah, cool. Uh, the front-end frameworks like uh, React, uh, currently has uh, support also already support for that one. When it come to the, uh, as I said earlier, that when it come to the web story, it's typical HTML tags. So you can use AMP tags inside your Angular or Vue.js code and use it as a typical web page. And same thing applies. Yeah. So you can actually have them inside. Currently, Next.js itself has a library for AMPs where you can actually create the same page. Uh, AMP version out of it. Uh, it's completely supported and is uh, featured in uh, AMP.dev also. And apart from that, there are community projects for Angular and Vue also. So it can be embedded easily and you can actually create uh, using that frameworks also for web stories. All right, so it can be embedded easily. And thank you so much, Mr. Um, Chatu for this wonderful talk and for answering our live questions from our live viewers. Thank you so much and um, thank you very much for the organizing team for inviting me here and I thank you very much for the audience who was uh, listening to me and asking the questions and yeah and I wish you all the best for the future sessions and all the best. Thank you so much sir.